to the Father, to Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done.
I have Equa Women Fellowship, Equa Just DCC. Are you here? Okay, they are here. Can we also welcome them? Clap for them, okay? We have Equa Bukuru Mass Choir, Bukuru DCC. Okay, thank you. They are here. We have Choir. 3D headquarters Joss. Okay, they are here. We have Women Choir, 3 Division headquarters Joss. Great. We have Choir Air Force Base Joss. Great. You are going to sing in this order. The women Joss DCC will sing first, followed by Bukuru Mass Choir, followed by Choir Three Division Headquarters, followed by Women Choir, and then Choir Air Force Base will sing last. Please, in this order. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.
Our Jesus, a clap offering. A clap offering for all the ministrations. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, the five singing groups, for ministering this morning to our souls. And we 
thank God that our lives have been blessed through your administration. May the name of the Lord be praised forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Let me announce to our guests that there are rest rooms behind there in case you may want to answer the call of nature. If you are a man, you can go outside. There's a door outside, but on the building, you can find a door there to help yourself. And women, inside the building, behind you will see there's a door behind there. So that um, we will all be in good order in this service. Um, my attention has also been drawn to the fact that some few guests have come in. And I'd like to invite you, sir, who has done the introduction a moment ago to acknowledge. In a service like this, sometimes protocols are broken. Uh, while in the course of this worship, we were honored to have now missed the personality of a Vice Marshal P. Dimfina. He is the coordinator of Project Impl Implementation Monitoring Team, Headquarters Nigerian Air Force, Abuja. You're most welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, we are moving. We are in number eight. President address. And uh, I like us to welcome the Equa president as he comes for his address. Can we please welcome the Equa president? The women just sang that there is power in singing. So let's sit, uh, stand up and sing. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Jehovah. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. We give him praise. You are worthy to be glorified. in heaven but there will be one language you will be speaking in heaven and I want to teach you that language I don't know how many of you know the language that you will be speaking in heaven now just in case you don't know I have the great pleasure 
of teaching you the language that you will be speaking in heaven. Now, in that very holy, sacred, heavenly language, if you want to say good morning, the Lord bless you. You say, Ajife, Fiawuna, Shakwatifia Naburka. That's the language you'll be speaking in heaven. Praise the Lord. Let's sit down, please. <laughs> This is a day of great rejoicing and we are so glad to have with us my fellow, I almost said fellow Nigerians, but I've forgotten that. I remember that we are no more in the era of fellow Nigerians. So my fellow Equa executive members, our guest speaker for today, Reverend Associate Professor Sarma, DCC, Chairman, Secretaries, and all others that are here. My very dear brother, the General Officer Commanding 3 Division, and our Air Vice Marshal that has just arrived, and our Baba here. Sorry, I don't know your name, but the Lord knows you by name. All the chaplains that are here, our very great singing groups that have made this occasion particularly very, very colorful. And the reason for which we are here, our dear brethren, the director of chaplaincy for the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Navy, and Nigerian Air Force. All the distinguished guests that are here, brothers and sisters in Christ, you are all welcomed in Jesus' name. Amen. On behalf of Equa Executive, I bring you greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I praise God for granting all of you safe trips from your various destinations to these promises. Today is a very special day in Equa. In fact, I would dare say someone approached me and said, Kuta Bagani, Abubu Ahaka, military, armed forces, Nacha Bantaba. Say ache unkun taba ni ban taba na che ban taba. Now, Reverend Group Captain DP Ghanier understands what I'm saying. <laughs> we are all gathered here for the Thanksgiving service in honor of the directors of the Nigerian Army, Navy, and Air Force Chaplaincy Protestant Services. Specifically, this occasion is to return thanks unto God and offer special prayers for equa sons who have recently been assigned very sensitive national assignments. These equa clergymen are not in any special of order of protocol listed below. Reverend Colonel B. Kauche, Director of Nigerian Army Chaplaincy, Reverend Commander N.N. B.M.E. Ajayi, Director of Nigerian Navy Chaplaincy, Reverend Group Captain D.B. Ghani, Director of Nigerian Air Force Chaplaincy. What makes this day special and occasion historic? I stand to be corrected, but in my little knowledge of the history of our country, Nigeria, I cannot recollect any time since its existence when the overall leadership of the National Chaplaincy of the Three Arms Army, Navy, Air Force has been entrusted in the hands of one denomination as it has just happened. I think the Lord deserves a clap offering.
Now tell me, if this is not clearly the finger of God at work, what else is it? As far as I know, Equa did not lobby for these three sons to be appointed. We did not lobby for that to be done. We did not lobby for them to be appointed into these sensitive positions. If any lobbying were to be done, as the Equa president, I should have ever been in the forefront of the lobbies on their behalf, or at least I should have been in the know. But I can say this with all authority that nothing like lobbying took place by Equa. I want to emphasize this. And I'm sure that God deliberately did this so that his name alone will be glorified. In the words of Psalm 118, 23, the Lord has done this and it is very marvelous in our sight. The battle of all battles. I have earlier on stated that this occasion is for us to return thanks unto God and offer special prayers. In the true spirit of today's event, this is not really a celebration. What should we celebrate? If somebody's son or a loved one is suddenly thrown into the forefront of the fiercest battlefield, should such a one celebrate? Certainly not. The very least a loving, believing father or mother or other loved ones can do for their sons who are in the forefront of the battlefield is to be constantly committing them into God's unfailing hands. And this is exactly the process we are here to kickstart today. That is the ministry of fervent prayers and intercessions on behalf of these sons of ours to enable them uphold the trust that they have been given in their assignments and for them to finish well. If we all truly understand the enormity of the task that God has entrusted into the hands of these three individuals, then we must soberly and firmly resolve in our hearts to rise up from our slumbers and pray. Ephesians 6, 12 to 18, a bridge says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual wickedness of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything to stand. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. It is no longer news that Nigeria is at war with itself. This is as a result of the internal security challenges being posed by Boko Haram terrorists, harassment killings, bandits' invasions, water pirates' menace, intercommunal violent clashes, armed robberies, kidnappings, ritual killings, to mention but a few. These are some of the gruesome acts being perpetrated by Nigerians against Nigerians which have altogether put great strain on security agencies, especially the military personnel who have been drafted to deal with eternal security problem by contending with their own citizens rather than their original role of defending the territorial integrity of its country and its people. Very sadly, it is an open secret that our nation is under a siege by criminal elements with international connections. 
It is globally known that terrorists and bandits alike are having a field day in many parts of our country, resulting in daily casualties. Very unfortunately also, Nigeria is increasingly gaining a reputation for being one of the worst countries where Christians are being persecuted. Where then is our hope? Where does our help come from? The scripture says, the weapon of our warfare not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 4-5. And the psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. We affirm the words of Psalm 23 that the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not be in want. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside quiet waters. He restores our souls. He guides us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For you are with us. You are rolled and you are starved. They comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our heads with oil. Our cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. What is God saying especially to Equa? When at the inception of this current Equa administration, God gave us a word saying, Behold, I am doing a new thing from Isaiah 43, 19 which we have since adopted as our theme for this year, I must confess that even I, as the president of EQUA, cannot claim to have fully understood the very deep meaning of the prophecy. By the way, God himself has been confirming this prophecy. I am beginning to be more afraid of his ways. Time shall fail me to recount here so many amazing and wonderful things that God has been doing among our members and for us as a denomination. I have no doubt that the events of which we are thanking God for today are some of the new amazing things that God has promised us as a denomination to do. This is truly, truly the Lord's doing and it is really, really marvelous in our eyes. Spiritual bombardments. Whenever there is any serious external aggression against a nation leading to a full-blown war, the nation always resorts to using her air, land, and sea military establishment to defend her territory. Therefore, I can confidently say that by putting the national directorate of the army land Navy for sea and Air Force for air in the hands of Equa Sons and by implication the entire Equa in general, God is clearly telling Equa that he has firmly put the spiritual battle for the soul of our country in our hands. And this is not a joke. God is clearly telling Equa to wake up and fight for the survival of the church in Nigeria and the survival of the entire good people of Nigeria. We must not take this command lightly. As God appointed watchmen over our nation Nigeria, we must never be silent day or night. We must continue to call on the Lord and give ourselves no rest and give God no rest until 
he establishes Nigeria and makes her the praise of the earth. And this based on Isaiah 62 from verse 6, 6 to 8. We must in the power of the Holy Spirit rise up to the occasion. And because God is on his throne, his grace will be all sufficient for us. And we will not disappoint him in the mighty name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Admonition. To you, my sons, Reverend Colonel B. Kauche, Reverend Commander NNBME Ajayi, and Reverend Group Captain D. B. Ghani, you are the reason why we are all gathered here. Neither I nor the rest of the Equa Executive are here to congratulate you on your appointment. This is not yet the right time to congratulate ourselves. Instead, realizing the enormity of the assignments that are ahead of you, we have called you here as parents to assure you that you have our full backing and support. Anytime you feel as if the assignment is overwhelming you, know that we, your spiritual fathers, are constantly upholding you in prayers. In addition, we will mobilize our team members to do the same for you. Let me give you a word from the Lord, from Joshua 1, 3 to 9. I will give you every place you set your foot. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses give you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful where you go. Do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. As the directors of chaplaincy, protestant of these three most important arms of the Nigerian military, the spiritual battle of our nation's defense lies squarely in your hands. And this is by no means a small assignment. I'm not the one to tell you how the lives of our military, including and especially those of our brethren, are often at risk. For these and more reasons, you must not fail our God. Also, you must not forget what your denomination Equa stands for. You must remain strong and be above board in this spiritual battle. You must keep encouraging your followers to pray without season. You must guide your fellow chaplains to preach sound messages that will lead officers, men, and their families into true repentance and dependence on God. Knowing that the lives of our brethren in the battlefront are in constant danger, you must not relent in your spiritual warfare. That is the only way the church of God and our nation can survive this present onslaught. Be rest assured on the promises of the Lord that the gates of hate shall not prevail against us. Our appreciation to the military personnel in the battlefield. Let me use this medium on behalf of Equ Executive to express our sincere appreciation to all military officers and men in the battlefield for the sacrifices of love to secure our country, Nigeria. Our hearts go out particularly to the family of many officers and men who paid the supreme sacrifice of death that Nigeria and Nigerians may be secured. We pray that the Lord Almighty will keep and provide for the needs of their families in Jesus' name. 
We also pray that God will shield those still in battle from the attacks of the enemies and grant them the courage to persevere in view of God's divine restoration of peace to Nigeria. Bringing back our members who are in captivity. Our sons, Reverend Colonel B. Kulche, Reverend Commander NMBME Ajayi, and Reverend Group Captain D.B. Ghani, let me publicly urge you and all your chaplains to join in the fervent prayers for the safe release of our daughters, Leah Sharibu and Alice Loksha, and the remaining Chibo girls, and indeed all innocent Nigerians who are in captivity in the hands of the devil's agents. I want to stress that Leah Sharibu and Alice Loksha are actually equal members too. I employ you to do whatever is within your powers, spiritually and otherwise, to ensure that these persons are rescued alive. Please do this in order to make our joy and the joy of millions of brethren all over the world complete. Our God, mighty in battle, is with you. And through him, you will accomplish this seemingly impossible task in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And to all of you who have gathered here to witness this historic occasion, I, on behalf of the Equa Executive, the celebrants, including all clergies and indeed all of God's ministers, especially those of us here in this country, give you the following charge in the words of Apostle Paul. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored, just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not everyone has faith. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance in Jesus' name. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1-5 As you go back at the end of this occasion, I pray that the good Lord who brought you here safely will equally grant you safe trips to your various destinations in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you all, and God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless Nigeria. Amen. This is wonderful, and we thank God. May God answer all the prayers by the president of Equa in the name of Jesus. Just before we listen to the message of God, I'd like us to sing the second hymn. The second hymn is on page 7. And we're going to do this in a standing position while the band will lead us as we sing to the praise of God, onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, looking unto Jesus who is gone before. Okay, band, you lead us.
General Secretary to come to introduce the guest preacher. Thank you very much. Just before I introduce the guest speaker, I'd like to also welcome to our miss this morning uh, a former Equa executive member and his wife, Reverend Dr. and Mrs. Les and Rebecca Baba. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we also want to thank the singing groups again for singing so well. You know, we used to have a trustee, Baba Maria Abu, when one Baptist pastor who had stayed in Baptist for too long and was ripe to return to Equa, didn't return, went and, and preached somewhere in uh, in an equa church. And the guy preached very well, you know, because he's got equa blood. <laughs> and so Baba Maria Abu said to him, Those women who sang over there, Kudao Gida. This morning, we are privileged to have to speak to us, a brother and a colleague in the ministry, our teacher, and the provost of one of our very important seminaries, the Equa Theological Seminary Kogoro. Reverend Associate Professor Beatrice Sarma will be bringing God's word. I also like to recognize his wife who is here with us. You are welcome, Ma. 
please, thank you very much. You are welcome. God bless you. On behalf of the president and the members of the EE, it's our privilege to welcome you to bring the message. Equal president, equal vice president, equal general secretary, equal treasurer, um, the equal executive past who are, who are here, our celebrants, please permit me to stay on the existing protocol because if I dare continue, I will end up in a guard room because I will definitely offend too many people and the people are here. <laughs> so please, permit me to skip all of this. And let us turn to Psalm 75. And my work has been made very easy because the president said almost everything I wish to say. And so thank you, President, for this. You have made my work very light. Thank you. Psalm 75. Psalm 75. Psalm 75. Once again, I want to appreciate equal leadership for this privilege to share the word of the Lord in this very wonderful occasion. And also the planning committee for trusting that I will be good for this uh, great op uh, occasion. I'm not qualified, but with the help of the Lord, we will read the word and hear from the Lord. Let's read Psalm 75. We praise you, God. We praise you for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. You say, I choose the appointed time. It is I who judge with equity. When the earth and all its people quake, it is I who hold its pillars firm. To the arrogant I say, boast no more. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horns. Do not lift your horns against heaven. Do not speak so defiantly. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt themselves. It is God who judges. He brings one down. He exalts another. In the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine and mixed with spices. He pours it out and all the wicked of the earth drink it down to its very dregs. As for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob, who says, I will cut off the horns of all the wicked, but the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for a very wonderful time we can come together and celebrate your goodness in the lives of sons and daughters of Equa, who have served so well and we exalted them to high positions. We thank you for them. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. Your word is before us. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you give us the interpretation and you also let us apply it to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The topic I want to talk about about very, very briefly is thanking God for our very own. Thanking God for our very own. The beacons of light and hope. That's the rider. The rider is the beacons of light and hope. Thanking God for our very own. The beacons of light and hope. We have come to celebrate our very own. We have a grandson, his name is Nathan. Before now, uh, he would see something good in the hands of anybody. And he would grab it and say, my own. 
I said, Nathan, when did this one become your own? But it is his own. As a two-year-old, anything he sees that is good is my own. My own. He said, Nathan, when did this one become your own? It's my own. My own. Well, we are celebrating our very own. Our very own. What we are doing is biblical. The Bible tells us to honor those who deserve honor. According to Romans 13, verse 7, give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Accordingly, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, from verse 12 to 13, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who work hard among you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Our brothers and their wives have worked hard to reach where they are today. I believe that like we have heard, there was no loving to have them there. They are there by merit and we give God the glory for this. Therefore, we owe them respect and honor. We are honoring our very directors of chaplaincy services. We thank God for you and we give God the glory for this feat. So why are we honoring these people? Number one, promotion is from the Lord. What did I say? Promotion is from where? Very simple truth. Promotion is from the Lord. If the Lord promotes our own, it is reasonable that we as a church denomination celebrate this feat and great blessing. And we thank God that we have leaders who taught it wise. And this is a very noble idea that we call our sons and daughters to celebrate what the Lord has done for Equa. Our primary focus in the psalm we have read is verse 6. Verse 6. No one from the east or from the west or from the desert can exalt themselves. But we can examine the context or background briefly. Psalm 75 is traditionally within book 3 of the Psalms. And book 3 from chapter, sorry, from uh, Psalm 73 to Psalm 89, you know, this section provides a broad picture of gloom and hope. Gloom and hope. Clearly, some of the Psalms are azelic. So we, we know what azelic Psalms mean. For example, when we turn to Psalm 137, we read this very lamentation. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars, we hung our harps. For there, our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? How? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. We could run down some of the Psalms that we are highlighting here. Like in Psalm 73, which we know very well. Surely God is good to Israel. To those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet are all, had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from the burdens common to man. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. The evil conceits of their minds know no limit. They scoff and speak with malice in their arrogance. They threaten 
operation. Likewise in Psalm 74, within the Psalms we are looking at, looking, Psalm 74 from, one, from verse 1 to 4, Oh God, why have you rejected us forever? Why? Why have you rejected us? Remember the people you purchased of all, the tribe of your inheritance, whom you redeemed, Mount Zion, where you dwell. Turn your steps, O oh God, toward these everlasting ruins, all this destruction the enemy has brought on the sanctuary. Likewise, in Psalm 74, from 8 to 12, they said in their hearts, we will crush them completely. How long will the enemy mock you, O oh God? Will the foe revile your name forever? But you, O oh God, are my king from of old. You bring salvation upon the earth. So I'm talking about despair and hope. Challenges, trials, persecutions that these psalmists encountered and were narrating. It is in this gloomy context, despair and hope, that we come to Psalm 75. Psalm 75 contrasts the proud and the humble, the wicked and the righteous. That is what Psalm 75 is all about. The psalm begins with thanksgiving and verse 1 gives us two reasons why the psalmist is thanking God. Verse 1. Verse 1 says, We praise you, God. We praise you, for your name is near. People tell of your wonderful deeds. So there are two basic reasons for praising God. First, God's name is near. Friends, let's say it. God's name is near. Now, the name of God is synonymous with his nature, with his character, with his attributes, and his very presence. When the psalmist says the name of the Lord is near, he is also saying that God himself is near. Are we together? God is near. The name of the Lord is near, meaning that the Lord is near. Now when you look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7, the Bible says, what other nation is so great as to have their gods near them? The way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him. Which other nation? One day, an elder preached in one church. And when he talked and talked and talked, I was boiling with some anger. He was talking about the fact that the powers in Nigeria are in the hands of the devil. And that no Christian will rise to any level because those people go to India to get their power. And I say, hmm. That the devil himself is in India. That they go to meet Satan there. And I say, eh? So when he finished, finished, I just could not hold my position. I stood up and I said, sir, I beg to disagree. We sing here that God is all powerful, that our God is near, that our God is the God who does anything he wants. And now we say that no Christian will rise except when we join them. What do you mean by that? If someone has to travel to, to, from Nigeria to India and I can just sit in my room and say, Abba Father, have a Jama'ah. By the time the fellow takes a flight to go to India, I have talked to my father 1,000 times. <laughs> True of us. All I can do is from the comfort of my room say, Abba Father. Shake your India. What is there in India? Second thing, 
Second thing. People tell of your wonderful deeds. Our God is great. Our God is wonderful. Our God does mighty things. As he pleases. As he pleases. As we progress in the psalm. Verses 2 to 5 shows that God may let the wicked individuals and nation go unpunished just for a while. Just for a while. They may use their position to oppress the poor. To show contempt to their maker. Because the Bible says that the one who oppresses the poor shows contempt to their maker. According to Proverbs 14 verse 3. They may use their position to marginalize the minority. They may bring harm to the people of God. They may forget that it is God who lifted them up. So they will brag and say that nothing can happen. My brothers and sisters, their glory is for a while. At the appointed time, from verse 2, at the appointed time, I myself shall dispense justice. Hallelujah. Amen. At God's appointed time, he will dispense justice. We cannot force him to dispense it today. He will do it at his own time. He will dispense justice. Because our God is a just God. I listened to one preacher. He said, look, because of the blessings the Lord has given us, even if there is no heaven, we have received our blessing. I said, huh? How about Jamaa? You mean that with all the kidnappings, the killings, the destructions, life ends here and it is okay? Aye. <sighs> President, will you agree with that? I look for day of justice. I look for day of justice and it will come. It will come. At the appointed time, I myself shall dispense justice. I say to the boastful, do not boast. To the wicked, do not flaunt your strength. Do not flaunt your strength so proudly. Do not talk with that arrogant stance. Stop talking like that. Yahweh is holding a cup filled with a heady blend of wine. He will pour it out. I shall break down all the strength of the wicked, says the Lord. And the strength of the upright will rise high. The strength of the upright will rise high. Yeah. Did you hear that? Brothers and sisters, history has shown that proud people, proud nations, proud empires have all fallen. There was a time when it was said that the sun never sets in the British Empire. You know what that means? That the empire has covered the whole earth. Wherever you turn, that was the British Empire. Where is the British Empire today? It's gone. Empires will come and go. Our God remains forever. Amen. Amen. Verse 6 shows that it is God who determines one's position in life. And my friends, this is our point. It is God who determines one's position in life. For not from the east or from the west and not from the wilderness comes lifting up. It is God who elevates individuals and nations. You know, there was a day when King Nebuchadnezzar was walking on the roof of the royal palace of, the, of Babylon. He said to himself, is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my own mighty power and for the glory of my majesty. The Bible says, even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. 
you will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. Seven times will pass by you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all the kingdoms on the earth and he gives them to anyone he wishes. Brothers and sisters, God elevated you. Some who do not acknowledge God attribute their success to their wealth, to their family, to their charms, to their malams, or to whatever workers, among other things. They say, it is because of that I am where I am. My friend, it is God who elevated you. Now listen, one primary point I wish to stress from verse 6 is that God does not lift up his people for nothing. Are we together? And the president has done justice to that. Hey, God does not lift up his people for nothing. When he lifted Joseph in Egypt, it was for the saving of many lives. That is how he summarized it. My brothers and sisters, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, for the salvation, for the saving of many lives. When God lifted Esther in the Persian Empire, her coming to royal position was for, a, for such a time as this. God was going to use her to deliver her people from the wicked plot of Haman the Agagite. And so God used Esther. And she was willing to say, if I perish, I what? If I perish, I what? Did she perish? When God lifted Daniel and his three friends in the Babylonian kingdom and the Persian kingdom and all of that, it was so that the kings of Babylon, the kings of Persia and their subjects will worship the God of Israel. We read in Daniel chapter 2, chapter 3, from 28 to 29. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him, and he, they trusted in him and defied the commands of the king. And were not willing to give up, they were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any god except their god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, against the God of Meshach, and against the God of Abednego be cut in pieces and their houses be torn into piles of rubble for no other God can serve, can save in this way. The same thing in Daniel chapter 6. King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations and men of every language Throughout the land, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God. And he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. Friends, the kingdom of God can never be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and saves. He performs signs and wonders. In the heavens and on earth, he has rescued Daniel from the power of lions. God has not lifted you for nothing. And this bring, brings us to our last point. Why we are honoring God for you. You are beacons of light and hope. Did you hear me? You are what? Beacons of light and hope. And let me explain. Every Christian is the salt and the light of the world. Every Christian is the salt and the light of the world. We are all called to be blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which we shine like stars in the universe. While every Christian is the light of the world, the pastor 
the chaplain, the under shepherd, carries a bigger light before the sheep. Are we together? Are we hearing? Are we hearing? I'm talking to one person, not you. I'm talking to only one person. Are we hearing? Yes, sir. Yes. While all Christians carry light, the chaplain, the chaplain carries a bigger light. Because as a shepherd, the others will see direction through you. Every chaplain in the army is God's bigger light for the kingdom of God. Friends, your role is to provide spiritual guidance and direction. The president has said this very well. You are to give spiritual direction. And by this, you are the soul, the heart, the mind, the light, and the hope of the armed forces. Because whoever controls the spiritual realm controls everything. Brothers and sisters, you are the light and hope to those who are without the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the army. You are the light and hope. All chaplains and the directors, you are the hope of those without the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the light and hope for those who are going to Zambia forest and may never return. Are we together? You give them the hope eternity. Because when they go to Zambiza, they may never come back. We lost our very own there. They may never come back. But you are also light and hope for a nation that is at the brink of total collapse and anarchy. We are familiar with what the president has already said. Fulani militias, Boko Haram menace, and all of that. And if any one of you has not read what the GS has uh, said during the Christian legislators, uh, Nigeria, uh, well, democracy, role, expectation, challenges, and opportunities, if you have not read this by the Equa GS, I ask GS, let them go with copies. Is it possible? The paper. That you presented to the legislators. You don't have copies. Can you produce some? Every leader in Nigeria has to read. Has to read this one. Sir, I beg you. My friends, we are in trouble. To call a spade a spade, we are at the brink of total collapse. Friends, there is no lying in this. We are collapsing. We are dying. We are dying. It is in this environment that the Lord has lifted you to serve in one of the most important strategic places in the armed forces. The places of influence. The spiritual engine room of the armed forces. We know your task is not easy at all. What will you do to heal a fractured and fragmented armed forces and society beginning from the top? What will you do to heal our fragmented and broken and fractured armed forces? What will you do? What will you do to restore decency of a noble profession like yours? How will you restore the dignity of this noble profession? Whose job is protecting the integrity of a nation? How, what will you do? What will you do to stop those who are ruining this nation because of their evil ideologies? What will you do? What will you do 
to stop the corruption and decay all over. What will you do, my friends? What will you do to reduce fear in our nation? I tell you, the Nigerian AI is filled with fear. Breathe in, you breathe in fear. Breathe out, you breathe out fear. It is fear everywhere. My friends, there is fear all over. What will you do? We met a friend in the U.S. last year. When they asked him, when are you going back to Nigeria? He said, you mean I'm coming out of hell and you're asking me when I'm going back to hell? <laughs> Friends, our air is filled with fear. What will you do to restore sanctity of lives? What will you do to save us from moral decay? We are people who can lie and lie. We are liars. A nation of liars. What will you do to restore this? To restore san sanity? We can lie. It is in Nigeria they tell us that uh, billions of naira have been swallowed up by a snake. <laughs> it is in Nigeria that someone told us that look, the tractors have been carried away by wind. Uh -huh. Tractors. And you are there. <laughs> tractors have been carried away by wind. And you are there. Kajita is cover. We lie and lie and lie. Even when we know that people know that we are telling lies, we still go ahead and lie. That is our nation. We lie. And they're still in frenzy. Still in back. Hey, we can steal what? We can steal. Steal very neat and lie about it. Even when people know that we are stealing, we say we are not stealing. Kajama. We can steal. How are you going to restore this? What about the immorality? The sexual immorality that has infiltrated everywhere? What will you do? To restore sanity. What will you do? Friends. As beacons of light and hope. I see you on your knees. Hearing from God. I see you with your Bibles. Meditating and hearing from God. I see you with your newspaper. Reading the headlines. I see you calculating Nigeria's next move. I see you speaking with the authorities. I, give, I see you giving godly counsel. I, give, I see you challenging every wrong move. In the power of the Lord, you can do it. I take you to another important point of this message and about to close. And this I learned from the animal world. My friend, in the animal kingdom, birds, reptiles, fish, animals, Insects of all kind. For them, survival is for the fittest. Protection of territorial integrity is key for the animals. Three methods of survival include fighting back, fleeing, hiding, or camouflage. If you cannot do any of this, you are finished. Human beings in Nigeria have become worse than animals now. Worse than animal kingdom. As Christians, do we want to flee? Where do we go? Do we want us to hide? How do we hide? Do we want us to camouflage to become what? You are the beacons of light and hope in the armed forces. It takes people of courage and conviction to change the world. It takes people of courage and conviction to change the world. Brothers and sisters, I ask you never to chicken out. In the animal war, animals size each other to see how big you are. And as this one is raising itself up, the other one is also raising itself up. And the hippopotam hippopotamus fight with their mouths. The bigger your mouth, the better. <laughs> you know hippos, right? The Who has seen hippos, please? How they fight. 
the, be the bigger your mouth, the better. In Nigeria, the bigger your mouth, the better. They fight. Size each other. My friends, we as Christians, they are sizing us now. Sizing us. Daily sizing us. Sizing us. Sizing us to see where our strength lies. You are beacons of life. Intimidation is the game in the animal world. Intimidate. When the other person is fearing, then you have advantage. What, the, what can the directors in the chaplaincy services do? What can the chaplains do to restore our seemingly hopeless situation? Please, my brothers and sisters, walk toward restoring the armed forces because already there, there is deep ideological divide among you. Some years back, I heard an Islamic cleric in Contagora, specifically, shouting and calling Muslim soldiers to take arms and fight the infidels. Muslim soldiers to take arms and fight the infidels. And I'm saying this with all authority. This is what happened. An Islamic cleric was calling on Muslim soldiers to take arms and fight for Islam in the army. To, to, to get their money from the Nigerian government and to fight us. And they said, we will go to Joss and slaughter them like chickens. And after a while, it happened. Friends, for us, though we live in the war, we do not wage war as the world does. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Our Lord came that we may have life. I am asking us to plead with God for the salvation of our dear nation and to do anything that is right to restore life to this dying nation. From Christian perspective, all human beings are made in the image of God. And we are all brothers and sisters in that big umbrella. No human being can claim to worship the true God, the father of all, if he or she refuses to treat in a brotherly manner those created in the image of God. Scripture says, he who does not love does not know God. This means that a person's relationship with the true God determines his or her relationship with fellow human beings. True love means that we do to others as we wish them do unto us. And the opposite of love is hatred. You know this, fellow, you know this very well. Anyone who hates a fellow human being based on ethnicity, based on religion, based on whatever consideration, is not connected with the creator of the heavens and the earth. And until all the roots of barbaric forces of hatred are unearthed and destroyed, hope for a united nation is a bad dream for us. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to empower others. Empower others. And by this I mean multiply yourselves. What did I say? Don't add. Multiply yourselves. Multiply yourselves. Please. Work hard to add value to the armed forces. Brothers and sisters. Work hard to add, to add value to the armed forces. When we produce something like a biro, we add value to life. When we produce something like a cell phone, we add value to life. Because we are a nation that does not know how to produce and add value, we specialize in doing the most foolish things on earth. 
And do you know why? I tell my students that there are two foolish things. The most foolish things on earth. One is stealing and one is destruction. Stealing. A thief has no value to life. A thief only steals. Even the Robin Hood, the, 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 the most notorious Robin Hood in the 17th century England, who would steal from the poor, or from the rich and give the poor, he was adding no value at all. He was only increasing poverty in the land. When we produce something, we add value. When we steal, we add no value. And those who actually progress are those who add value to life. Do you know how much value Dan Gwete has added to life? You know how much? Go everywhere and you will see the name Dan Gwete. With something we eat or we use, he has added value. One of the most foolish people on earth is a destroyer. Because destruction is very, very easy. It took a long time for us to build this edifice. But do you know what? In a matter of seconds, it can come down. Two of us. Does it take a genus to destroy this one? Even myself, I can try. Just bring petrol and, and, uh, and fire. I can try. Because it doesn't take a genus to destroy it only takes a foolish person without heart to destroy. Good people construct. B good people build. Good people add value. They don't destroy lives. But we must spread this message. Good people add value to life. They don't destroy. Brothers and sisters, as I end... I am asking you to pray for these people. To pray for them. And I am also asking you, my brothers and sisters, something very, very important. I want you to tell our brothers and sisters in the army, thank you very much, my friend. The Lord bless you very, very much. The Lord bless you. I was struggling. The Lord bless you. Tell our brothers and sisters in the army, that we need God-fearing people who will change things. If they do evil on the road, they have removed God's protection. If they do evil in the streets, they have removed God's protection. If they do evil at any corner, they have removed God's protection from them. It is by serving there as Christian soldiers that God will protect them. I ask you, tell them that we need godly people out there. And God will use them for the transformation of the nation. Yes. Since promotion comes from the Lord, let us plead with the Lord to promote more and more of this. Yes. We thank God for elevating you. The the spiritual direction you give extends to the entire armed forces. You are the under shepherds serving, serving Christ in one of the most challenging professions in the whole world. And especially in Nigeria where things are just so difficult. We thank God for you and wish you well. The Lord bless you. Sincerely thank God for this timely message. And we pray that it will go a long way to accomplish greatness for the Lord. We are going to have a special prayer section for the directors and the equal president 
will still come down to officiate this function of special prayer. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. We give you As we pray specially for them. And any DCC executives that are here and the pastor of Equa Headquarters Church. Yes, you come with your families. Let's surround them, please. Make sure we surround them. If you are too old and you are shock observers have gone, please, you are free to sit down as we go to the Lord in prayer. Praise the Lord. Father, we give thanks to you for this moment. And we, before you are throne of grace, these ones that kneel before you, in, in John 15, 5, you said you are the vine, we are the branches. If anyone abides in you, he shall bear fruit. For apart from you, we can do nothing. Lord, we acknowledge the fact that apart from you, they can do nothing. And you yourself told your disciples in Acts 1, 4, that they should not leave Jerusalem and never to attempt to do anything until they have received from heaven the gift of the Father. And in Acts 1, 8, you say, they shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them. And they shall be your witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. Our first plea with you, O oh God, this morning is for the release of power upon them 
and their families in the name of Jesus. Lord, apart from the power of your Holy Spirit at work in them, through them, using them, they can do nothing. So Lord, we ask, oh God, for the mighty release of the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon them in the name of Jesus. Through them in the name of Jesus. Lord, just like we have heard, you told us in John 10.10 10, that the devil comes to kill and to destroy. But you have come in order to give life. And life in abundance. Life to the full. Lord. Pray. That you are like. That every fiber of their being. Shall receive the fullness of your life. In the name of Jesus. You said in John in him was life and this life was the light of men. Through your servant again we have heard that you want them to be the light in the military and in this country. We pray that as this life manifests in them and through them that the light of the glory of your presence shall shine forth in their lives and families and in the military and in this nation in the name of Jesus. Let the light of the glory of your presence shine forth in the name of Jesus. We have heard again, we are living in evil times, perilous times, dangerous times. Where the enemy is up and doing, destroying lives. But in Daniel 11.32, Lord, your word said in times like this, those who know their God shall do exploits. Oh! Into your hands. Into your able hands. May you reveal yourself to them in the name of Jesus. As they wait upon you in prayer. As they wait upon you in the meditation of your word. Lord, reveal yourself to them in the name of Jesus. As you revealed yourself to Daniel in that dark, dark pagan land of Babylon. Oh God, if necessary, through dreams, through visions, through revelations of your mighty power that we have had today, let them see you. Let them hear you. Let them experience you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that, oh God, as your word says, they shall be bold as lion. And they shall be used of you to inspire boldness. In the lives of brethren that you have called them to shepherd. In the name of Jesus. Father. In 2 Kings chapter 6. When your servant Elisha was surrounded. With his servants by the enemy forces. 
And Elisha's servant was afraid. He said, Do not be afraid, for those with us are more than those that are against us. And he cried out to you and said, Open his eyes, Lord. And when his eyes were open, he saw that they were surrounded by chariots of heaven. The superior forces. Father, may you remind your servants always that first and foremost, you who are in them is greater than he who is in the world. And that those who are with them are greater than those who are against them. That you have deployed your holy angels, your mighty warrior angels with them. And Lord, when brethren come to them for prayer before they go to the battlefront, oh Lord, may you hear their prayer and release forces from heaven that will go ahead of them and to give them victory. In the name of Jesus. Father, our prayer today it's not just for the brethren who kneel before us. And it's not only for those who are here. We pray that you will arise in this nation. And fight our battles for us in the name of Jesus. Manifest yourself in power and glory. That this nation and the world may know that there is no any other God apart from you. We pray, O oh God, that the light of the glory of your presence shall shine forth in our nation. And darkness let darkness give way to light. In the name of Jesus. Let darkness give way to light. In the name of Jesus. We say thank you. Because we know. We can count upon you. At all times. And having committed. Your servants. Our brethren and their families into your hands. Haven't committed the Nigerian military into your hands. Haven't committed this nation in your hands, oh God. Like you have taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. We believe, oh God, that your will shall be done in Nigerian military. Through the lives of your servant. Amen. It shall be done in our nation. Amen. Here on earth. Even as it is. In heaven. To your glorious praise. For in Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you. We, we, are, we are moving. We are moving. We would like to take goodwill messages from two personalities. That will be done before the offering. And the two personalities to give good, goodwill messages are uh, the yeah, Vice Marshal, and uh, you will confess after your goodwill message, the Major General and Bazo will also come for a goodwill message. So in, in this order. Praise the Lord. The leadership of Equa from the president down to other officials. The preach, guest preacher today, our invited guests, well-wishers, members of the choir and women fellowship from other units. Today, we are at an occasion to thank God for the lives of some of us who will be heading the directorates of chaplaincy services in the armed forces. It is not by accident, and the equal president said something, that he did not lobby. <clears throat> I want to back that up to say that in the military, there's nothing like lobbying. In fact, when you lobby, it shows that you have a deficiency that you want to hide. And whatever you're looking for will not come to you. And because also we have a kind of hierarchy and competence strata in the military, appointments are given based on merit and seniority. It's not coming at a time like this for nothing. The coincidence that you have your sons heading the chaplaincy services of the military at this particular time. They cater for the spiritual needs of members of the armed forces, more so at this time. That means their thinking and their direction will be the same. They will give a focus to the members of the armed forces and provide their spiritual needs in a way that everything will look the same from all the services. So it's not by accident. And more so at this time, we're having a lot of challenges around the country, in the Northeast, in the Northwest, Middle Belt, South, South, Southwest, everywhere. So the armed forces members and their families need direction more now than ever before. Because a lot of challenges abound. A lot of depression everywhere. People resorting to suicide methods to end their lives. Why? They need focus. They need assurance. Some may have given up on themselves. They need you more now than ever before. And what is our duty as members of the Christian family? Is to pray for them. To pray for them to have that bigger shoulders to take the responsibilities they've been given now. Intercession is very important. Very, very important. I'll give you an example about myself. Perhaps I would have been dead long ago. I 
I was involved in an air crash. Little did I know that that same day and moment, my wife engaged in prayer and fasting. God laid it upon her life that she should fast and pray that particular day. And indeed, when we were about coming down, we couldn't see where to, to crash because everywhere was covered by forest. That means if you crash on top of a tree, your, your body might just be hanging up there. And I practically told myself, was this how I was going to die? Then all of a sudden, we saw a football field, and we headed to the place, and today we are alive by the grace of God. So we must be firm, we must be serious in trying to pray for our leaders, especially the spiritual leaders who will guide us and guide members of the military. We should put it very seriously. And I believe God will listen to us and hear our prayers. I pray that as you've been given these uh, appointments, it's for the assurance of the fact that you are capable of taking up these offices. And I know God will give you more grace to take up the responsibility. I pray that at the end of the day, we'll be so proud to come back here and say, you've done very well when you leave the services of the military. I thank you all for finding time to come to share with us. He has been, uh, especially the, my director, chaplain services, protestant, group captain Ghani, has been a person that we've been close for a period of time. I know him too well and other members of uh, the Air Force Chaplaincy Services. I pray the good Lord will continue to hear us and be with us. Thank you very much. The President, Evangel Evangelical Church winning all, uh, members of the executive, let me also take a cue from uh, the guest speaker to stand on existing protocol so that instead of going to the guard room, let me not be excommunicated from the church. <laughs> Because I'm a, I'm a bona fide member of Equa <laughs> um, I start by bringing you all greetings from uh, the Chief of Defense Staff and the Service Chiefs. Um, incidentally, I was also, I mentioned to especially the Chief of Defense Staff and the Chief of Army Staff that an occasion was taking place and he requested uh, that we really extend his goodwill to the church as a whole and to acknowledge the role that um, the members of the chaplaincy have really, the directors here, have really done in the spiritual life uh, of our personnel. Um, beyond today's Thanksgiving service, I think the address of the president uh, really captured what is in store for our spiritual upbringing in the armed forces. And one area that I would want to also throw to the directors here is the area of counseling. I think uh, our men require counseling uh, spiritual counseling on a one-to-one -one basis, not necessarily on a uh, church level service basis, but I think that's an area where there is a need for us to look, and not only the men, but also the family. 
their wives, their children, they're also under a lot of uh, stress and a lot of spiritual attack. So I think it is important that as the three of you, although we can only see two here, you need to synergize together, talk together, share ideas from one service to the other. And uh, we believe that with that, the spiritual being of the armed forces as a whole will be enhanced. Now that we're even in a very precarious situation in which um, you will see some of our men deployed for long periods without seeing their families. So it's important that spiritually they have comfort and they know the reason why they are sacrificing for our nation. So uh, it will be very important that there is a lot of cross-fertilization of ideas amongst the three services to ensure that um, the focus, the upbringing of the equa denomination is also brought in a very good light. Now, before I sit down uh, to the ECWA president, I just want to say that um, the general secretary has put me in trouble. He has put me in trouble, and I'm going to illustrate it by a little story. There is a very notorious leper, very stubborn. Him and his friends, every day they sit by the market. And uh, when women come to go to the market to do their chepeni, while the one will beg, the other one, out of um, stubbornness, will just whistle. He has a little plate there ahead. He will just whistle. And with his left hand, he will say, the woman once he sees his face, will immediately drop something there. So he was constantly doing it. One day, a lady came in, a woman, to go to the market. His friend told him, he did the first whoosh, and uh, unfortunately, the woman refused to budge. So he did it again. Whoosh, the woman refused to budge. Then his friend whispered to him, Kai Malang, one of my soldier chipper. In fact, immediately he just <laughs> reversed it back. The general secretary today, he said those are lovely wives there that they should uh, go back home. To <laughs> let me tell you, my ten soldier in Nampa. You see how beautiful they are. I know you enjoyed uh, the, the administration. So I want you to do back before I leave this place. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> uh, we don't want anything that will uh, temper with our GS because military will not know you are GS we will love you so don't enter fight that you cannot uh, be able to fight thank you so much we're going to take offering um, we're going to have two ushers to stand here one will be here and one will be here and this is how we're going to go about it we'll start from the back as the band will be leading us in songs from the back we come this way these two rows you come through this way when you put it you go this way and this row you just go this way to take your seat you drop your offering here and the same thing you come from the back this way this way when you put it this row you go this way this row you go this way in this order Please, quickly, let's start coming from the back. You are God. 
God, you are not just people, you are not just natural, you are a great God. Everybody be on your feet, please. Everybody be on your feet. You are not just people, you are not just natural, you are a great God.
for your vote of thanks or the response. Thank you. Uh, as you see me standing, I have the military, I have my license was given by me, I mean, uh, given to me by Equa. So I have two laws now guiding me as I'm standing right now. So uh, the president, Equa, let me stand on the already existed protocol so that at least uh, the Equa president will not collect or the executive will not collect my license. Or the GOC will now say, ah, my friend. So I stand on the existed uh, protocol. Uh, we want to first and foremost thank God for making it possible for us to have this day. When the president of ECWA got the news, he called us, it is true that what he had, that the chaplaincy in the Nigerian army, the chaplaincy, the chaplain of the Nigerian army, the chaplain in the Navy and the Air Force are all of Equa. We told him, yes, he said, definitely we are going to organize a special Thanksgiving. And behold, today is the day. We thank you, the president, for that bold step taken. And may God continue to bless you, bless your ministry. And your tenure is going to be a success in Jesus' name. We also want to thank our great nation, Nigeria. Thanks goes to the chief, uh, the CNC, the chief of defense staff, the chief of army staff, the chief of naval staff, the chief of air staff, for granting us this, uh, for us to come to this place, or for making us to be what we are, it is done by them, by the CNC, by the chief of defense staff, by the service chiefs, to be what we are today. We want to give them kudos. We want to thank them for allowing us to come to this place because we have to apply that we want to come for a special service like this. As the general officer commanding of three divisions has said, I don't want to repeat it again. We're standing uh, for the chief of defense staff, for the chief of, or the chief of uh, army staff, chief of naval staff, and chief of air staff. Uh, we want to again appreciate uh, our special uh, guest, special chief to special senior officers of the armed forces. We are here sitting down to those who are serving and those who are retired. We thank you for honoring our invitation despite the short notice. May God bless you and grant your heart desires. <laughs> Furthermore, we want to thank all the chaplains and the assistant chaplains from the armed forces for their support and prayers. To our guests, colleagues, family, friends, and well-wishers. We appreciate you for standing by us and supporting us. May God bless you all. We want to thank our family members, our spouses, children, for being instrumental to our success. Historically, this program for its first of its kind in the history of Equa, the nomination as being said by the Equa president. And I can say as a nation that all the directors of certain services protestant but of the armed forces are of Equa. To God be the glory. Thank God for the privilege and opportunity to be part of this honor and historic occasion. To Equa family, we are proud of you and we remain very loyal and committed to the ministry. 
we still remain committed as ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of Equa, in preaching, teaching, and presenting Christ in all ramifications. This is a challenge and motivation for us to do more in various fields. I promise not to let you down. The teachings and the discipline you have imparted in us will not depart from us and our next generation to come. Emphatically, I want to say we, want, we will continue to give you our maximum support to the growth of Equa, either through our spiritual, physical, and material resources uh, to our enablement. Our thanks goes to Equa Executive, the DCCs, the LCCs, and especially the DCC, those who have ordained us to have the certificate, seconded us to go to the armed forces. We want to say kudos to you, to our DCCs. And we pray we are expecting more. When we train people in the armed forces, we'll still go back to you to ordain more of us. Please open your arms so that we can receive our ordnance so that they can be ordained, be seconded into the armed forces. I want to make at least two requests to Equa Executive. Equa should please be inviting the head of the chaplains and the chaplains to our Equa General Church Council or District Church Councils meetings because we have been omitted in such a thing so that we can learn even if you are back we cannot be left out I want to strongly again appeal to Equa executive to draw a plan for the retiring chaplains from the armed forces to tap from their wealth of experience and exposure of their ministry in the military. Equa, we cannot thank you enough for this event. To also, to all of us that we are here, we want to thank you. Once again, we are grateful to God. First, our nation, the commander in chief of the armed forces, our executive, Equa. And the entire Equa family, the very senior officers here, serving and retired. We thank you for your humility. We thank you for your time. To all, we want to thank you for being part of this historic event. And we pray for journey message to our destinations. Long live Equa. Long live the armed forces. And long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thanks, and God bless you. you. We take announcements from the planning committee. Praise the Lord. I stand here this afternoon on behalf of the planning committee to first and foremost appreciate the Equa executive for the privilege given unto us to organize this event and to thank all of you for taking your time out of your busy schedules to be here so that we might fellowship and appreciate the Lord together. At one point in time or the other, prayers have actually been offered for traveling mercies as we go back to our homes and that is what we are still standing on. We have been able to reach to as many as we have invited, you know, with what they will take to strengthen their bodies following this service as they go back home. We don't have a special place for you to go and sit, but you'll be reached out to wherever you are, and I'm sure a lot of us already have, you know, gotten what we are supposed to take. So we ask for God to bless that and to take you back to your home safely. Thank you once again for coming.
Okay, we are going to stand. We will be saying the Nigeria National Anthem. After the Nigeria National Anthem, we will take the Equa Anthem. Equa and team. One stanza. Nigeria and team face. Father in heaven, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has made it possible for us to gather here because you are the owner of the church. Thank you for the grace that you gave to us mankind. Your grace abound. You taught us everything, including thanksgiving. And that is why today we have gathered to thank you for our brothers and for our brothers in the military. Thank you for the calling to which you gave them, the calling unto service. To that we are grateful, O Lord. Remember what you did even here when you were here on ministry. When there was no insufficiency of food, O God Jesus. You lifted up your hands with the insufficiency available. You made it sufficient and you blessed it. Lord, when you did that, it went round for all the people that have gathered. And so, Lord, we thank you. Through their insufficiencies, you have made them sufficient in this calling. And we pray, Lord, that you give them all it takes to accomplish this task in the name of Jesus. We thank you again, even in your ministry, oh Lord, you taught us to bring thanks unto you. And that was why among the ten lepers, 
one of them came back and gave thanks to you. The scripture recorded that he had wholesome healing. And so, Father, for these ones that have come to give this thanksgiving, it is our prayer that you give them wholesome knowledge to be able to embark on this journey in the name of Jesus. Amen. For Equa that have organized this, O oh Lord, we pray that you give Equa insight that will enable us to accomplish our mandate in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for everyone that have become part of this thanksgiving. We ask that thanksgiving will continue to be their portion. Amen. That everything that we, step, uh, we put our hands to do, and even when we step out to embark on any journey, you grant us success in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for leading us back safely. Amen. You are God in heaven, and there is nothing you cannot do. And that we are assured, because we have used this thanksgiving to show to us all that you are, even through your word. This we thank you, O oh Lord, for accomplishing all of this. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. 